some of the way, all of the way. Amen. Never shall forget. How can we forget? Every time the Lord blesses us to see another day, we have so much to thank him for. Yes. Feel good about this morning. From the epistle of James. James, the first chapter and the fifth verse. Father God, as we come this morning, we're asking you, Father God, to just take all of us out of self. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And allow your Holy Spirit to have the right of way. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to do what you do best. Yes. Show up and show up today in the lives of these, your people. And as you're blessing us, we're going to praise your name. Amen. And it's in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. James, the brother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. James 1 and verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You have not because you ask not. And this morning I want to talk to you from this thought. An offer you can't refuse. Well. Man. An offer you can't refuse. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard people make comments like, I went to a department store and the sale was so good, I couldn't refuse to buy such and such items. Mm -hmm. God has made us an offer. And if we analyze that offer that he has made, it's an offer that you just can't refuse. Amen. I have a question this morning. What would you do if God offered you anything you wanted? What would you ask him for? God posed this very question to King Solomon's son David. I mean, King David's son Solomon. And how did Solomon respond? In 1 Kings, the third chapter, verses 9 through 12. Let me read those uh, verses to show each and every one of you how Solomon responded. Solomon is a young king, the third king of the nation of Israel, a young man. And he says to God, he doesn't know how to lead his people out or to bring them in. So he prayed to God, and the Lord God appeared to Solomon by night. And this is God's response to his servant Solomon. Solomon says, therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? This is God's response. So the speech pleased God that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall anyone like you arise after you. Amen. History declares that Solomon was the wisest man 
whoever walked upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, just what is wisdom? What does the Bible mean by wisdom? Wisdom is not having a head full of facts. It is not only seeing, or wisdom is not only seeing or knowing all there is to know about life. Wisdom is seeing and knowing what to do about life. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is not only seeing and knowing the truth, but wisdom is also seeing and knowing what to do with the truth. Yes. Yeah. Wisdom acts to conquer uh, and, and, and gain the victory over all of our trials and tribulations. Asking wisdom of God is the way to conquer the trials and the tribulations we will face in life. Amen. This morning I'm asking, before you are asking you this question, what would you do or what do you do with the wisdom that God has given you? Mm -hmm. God has made us an offer that we can't refuse. In the book of Proverbs, and this is a book that was written by Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived upon the face of the earth. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, wisdom is the foundation. Yes, is. We must have understanding, mm -hmm. we must have knowledge, but we also must have wisdom. Yes. Wisdom is the foundation, the building block. And the word declares that the fear of the Lord, whenever we reverence God and give him the respect that is due to his name, that means that God has instilled in us yes. wisdom, yes. wisdom to do his will. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, all of us that have been born of God, that is, have accepted Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, God has imparted that word of wisdom to each and every one of us. Yes. Psalms 111 and verse 10 echoes this. The fear of the Lord. Everything has to have a beginning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you want to be smart in the eyesight of God, ask God for his wisdom. Accept his son, Jesus Christ. That's showing wisdom on your part. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. The choir of the praise team was just telling us that we have so much to thank God for. It says praise, uh, his praise endures forever. He has blessed us with enough wisdom knowledge and understanding to realize that we didn't wake ourselves up. Amen. He has given up enough wisdom to understand that with God all things are possible, but without him we can do nothing. He has made us an offer that none of us can really rightfully refuse. Amen. Let's go to the Psalm of Proverbs chapter 3. Solomon says the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. In other words, he says, in the very beginning, God has shown his wisdom in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Not only did it take understanding, not only did it take knowledge, but God also shows his wisdom whenever we look, step outside uh, on any starry night and just gaze up into the heavens. My brothers and sisters, the stars just didn't get there by themselves. On a moon, on a moon-filled night, that moon just didn't get there by itself. Mm -hmm. Every day when we get up and the sun is out, the sun did just just did not get there by itself. Yes. It took a wise God, a wise God, yes, to set all of this in motion. Yes. And my brothers and sisters, man, this is how wise God is. Man can take something and make something else. Only God is a creator. God took absolutely nothing and made everything. And the word says all he had to do was just speak a word. And all of it became into existence. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, 
the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. Only an awesome an almighty God, an all wise God. So often we talk, we talk about God's might and his strength. And he is an awesome God. He is an almighty God. But he is an all wise creator. See, some of us, if we were granted absolute power, can you imagine what this world would be like if some people had absolute power? God has absolute power and authority, but he has the wisdom to handle that, that power that he has. Yes, sir. Some of us, that power would go to our heads and everything would be in chaos. Mm -hmm. All right. God, by his wisdom, his wisdom, Proverbs chapter 4, the word Solomon says, listen, get wisdom. It's the foundation, the building block. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget. In other words, when God uh, blesses you with this wisdom and the understanding, he's saying, don't leave home without it. Don't go out there into, into the world and get around folk who doesn't reverence, don't reverence God and don't know God and you start acting like them. Remember who you are. And remember whose you are. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget it nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom tells us, listen, don't go over there. Wisdom tells us, don't hang around this person or that person. Wisdom will help keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing, the foundation. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, Get understanding. Yes, 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 yes. Get understanding. Mm -hmm. yes, Get wisdom. You need wisdom. Mm -hmm. We need knowledge and we need understanding. Yes. And God is the one who equips us with each and every one of those attributes. Mm -hmm. He's making us an offer this morning. And if you think about it, it's an offer that you can't afford to refuse. Then the writer, the preacher Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes 2 and 26 says, For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. If you accept his son, God doesn't see us anymore as who we are, but he sees us as who we are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we ask God, and let me share this this morning, have you ever heard Christians say, well, I don't really know what to ask God for? Well, guess what, brothers and sisters? You can't ask God for the wrong thing. Not as a child of God. Let me explain something to you. This is where wisdom comes in. In, 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 in Romans chapter 8, Paul informs us that we don't always pray as we are. Sometimes we don't know. We get so choked up and filled up, we can't get words out. Mm -hmm. The word says that's when the Holy Spirit comes along. And the Holy Spirit interprets for us, and the Holy Spirit then tells Jesus what, what we really want to say, and then Jesus goes to the Father on our behalf. So the Holy Spirit is going to tell Jesus just what you need. The Holy Spirit is going to tell Jesus just what we want. And I tell you, then Jesus takes what the Holy Spirit says and goes to his father and says, Father, I need you to help my children down there. So don't worry about praying for the wrong thing. The Holy Spirit, even if you want to, the Holy Spirit does the interpreting. The Holy Spirit steps in and intercedes on your behalf. Then Jesus up in glory, he's the interceding up there on our behalf. We have a mediator here on earth who is the Holy Spirit, and we have a mediator up in heaven who is Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father. So how in the world can you refuse an offer like he's extending? Yeah. For God gives wisdom and knowledge yes, and sir. joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, mm -hmm. he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. Do y'all get that? The word, the word that 
declares that the sinner, he's gathering up riches and heaping up stuff that the righteous is going to enjoy. Yeah. The, the sinner is busy gathering. Mm -hmm. Thinking that, oh, like, you know, the man that built the barns, and he filled them up and still had yeah. uh, grain left. Mm -hmm. And he says, what am I going to do with this extra grain? I know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tear down the old barns and build bigger barns. Yes. And once I have gathered everything into the barns, I'm going to say to my soul, soul, you have much good stored up for many years. Eat, drink, and be merry. And it says that very night, his soul was required of him. Yes. Now all of that planning he had done didn't include God in the plan. Where was wisdom? All that he had gathered was enjoyed by someone else. He gives the work of gathering and collecting to the sinner that he may give to him who is good before God. This is also vanity and grasping for the wind. They out there grasping like a drowning man, grasping for a straw, thinking that they're going to enjoy something mm -hmm. and someone else comes along. You know, some of us, some of us was making that very same mistake. So true, so true. We were gathering, not enjoying anything, saying that when I get old enough to retire, then! Mm -hmm. Who said you were going to live to the retirement age? That's right. While God has given him blessing, he wants us to enjoy mm -hmm. some of the fruit of our labor. Mm -hmm. All right. He's made us an offer that we can't refuse. This is what Job said. Job says, when he made a law for the rain and a path for the thunderbolt, God did this. Then he saw wisdom and declared. He prepared it indeed. He stretched it out. And to man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord. Keep repeating it over and over. He's trying to get our attention. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. He says he's giving us and making us an offer that we can't refuse. Listen, he says if you go out there and do what is right, he says, listen, I'm going to bless you. But if you're going out there doing what is evil, going against my commandments, how can God bless you when we're going against what he's commanded us to do? Amen. Wisdom says we need to follow the path that has been laid out before us by the word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 through 24 says, Where is the wise? Where is the person that claims that they are wise? The word says for us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The wise man or the wise woman is always trying to make their way to the house of the Lord. If they are able to come, they are trying to make their way. Some folk feel like they can stay at home and just send an offering and everything is all right. Mm -hmm. But wisdom says, when I heed what the word of God says, it says for us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. Yeah. So he says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe, the one who's supposed to know the law? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. Look at how the world is today. Mankind is getting for his book since they're getting smarter and smarter every day. We're putting people on the moon. We're sending spaceships all the way to, 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 to Mars and landing on Mars and coming back. But when it comes to the knowledge of God, mankind is trying to leave God out of everything. Nowadays, during Christmas, Christmas is supposed to be about Jesus Christ. But what man has done, man will put an X up there telling us about Xmas. We want to X him out of everything. We have printed on our money in God we trust, but in actuality, we're trusting in ourselves and not trusting in God. So it says, for since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. 
It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. He's not saying he saved, he's saving the world by foolish preaching. Because some preaching is foolish preaching. But because of man's wisdom, man looks at the word of God as if, as if it is a joke. And if you say something about God nowadays, they'll say that you are old time. Someone told me the other day that looking at the word of God, God was a bigot. I said, well, if he was a bigot, I'm a bigot, and I'm in good company. It's God's word. For a Jew's request a sign. Must be a lot of us that are Jewish. My left foot was itchy. Oh, boy, that means you're going to get some money. My left ear was jumping. My right foot or my right eye. It says, for the Jews request a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greek foolishness. But to those who are called, you are here today not on your own, but the Holy Spirit prompted you to be here. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Jesus is wisdom personified. Wisdom. If you want wisdom, you can go to Jesus Christ. God has perfect wisdom, perfect knowledge, and perfect understanding. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And whenever you get a chance, read uh, his name. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17, uh, 15 through 17 says, See then, because we are children of God, and God has given us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It says, See then, that you walk circumspectly. Mm -hmm. That is, walk like you are children of God. Yes, Live like you are children of God. Live like one day you're going to see Jesus for yourself and you're going to have to give an answer for your stewardship for the work that you've done down here. So he says we're supposed to live like, in other words, follow the pattern that Jesus had laid down for us. Mm -hmm. Don't compare your life to someone else's lifestyle. Because the word says as far as we're concerned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the one we need to pattern our lives after is the one called Jesus Christ. Amen. The one who never seen. Mm -hmm. See, when we compare ourselves to other people, we're always going to come short. Mm -hmm. Because they've come short. All of us have missed them all. Mm -hmm. Walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Mm -hmm. You see, what the world teaches that everything there is to life, you're going to experience it right now. There is no heaven, and they teach that there is no hell. My brothers and sisters, that's one of the greatest deceptions of the devil. See, the devil is not walking around with a red suit on and with horns and a, and a tail and a pitchfork. But no, the devil is walking around with a nice dress on or a three-piece suit. The great deception is to trick people to believe that there is no heaven. And there is no hell. Mm -hmm. But my brothers and sisters, because we have the wisdom of Christ on the inside of us, we know that payday is coming at the rock. Redeeming the times. Yes, sir. Because the days are evil. When we look around, what do we see? Mm -hmm. Violence everywhere. Mm -hmm. Therefore, do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. He's making us an offer that we can't refuse this morning. Accept the wisdom of God. And once we have that perfect wisdom on the inside of us, we don't have to worry about going astray. And even if we do, we know that we can go back to our father. We can go down on bending knee. We can go and sit on the side of the bed or in our recliner. We can call on the name of the Lord and ask the Lord to forgive us. And the word says that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. That's God for us. All right? Colossians 4, 5 and 6 says, Walk in wisdom. See, it's more than talking. Mm. We've got to live this thing. Yes, sir. Walk in wisdom toward those who are without. He's talking about the ones that are outside. Mm -hmm. The ones who don't know the Lord. Again, the, whenever you said that you were a Christian and you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, it was as if a bullseye was put on your back. Mm -hmm. So now everywhere you go, people that know you that, that, that understand that you say and profess that you are a Christian, they are watching you to see what type of lifestyle you are living before them. And they are waiting on you to mess up. To say, I told you so. I told you, he or she is what they profess to be. Christians don't act like that. Well, I have a question for you. If you are not saved, how do you know how a Christian is supposed to act? Let your speech always. See, it's not always what you do. Sometimes it's what you say and how you say it. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. See, if you put the right amount of salt or the right amount of pepper in this thing, that food tastes so good. But if you get a little heavy handed, every time someone see you, you beating them up about what they did wrong. Never telling them about what they did right. Heavy handed, you know. Putting too much salt on the thing. When people see you coming, what they gonna do if they see you first? Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Use some wisdom. Lord, is this the right time for me to say something? You don't need to say something to a person every time you see them about their lifestyle. A drunk already knows he's a drunk. Drug addict already knows they're a drug addict. You don't have to beat them upside the head. Just tell them every now and then, brother, I love you. Sister, I love you. We missed you at church today. Don't beat them up. Being heavy-handed, putting too much salt. Then when you taste your own food, you can't eat. Right. That you may know how you ought to answer each one. All right? Back to the foundation text. If anyone lacks wisdom, here's an offer. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God. When you accept Jesus Christ, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. In other words, Jesus doesn't play favorites. He wants all of us to have wisdom. He wants all of us to have knowledge and understanding so that we can do his will. You see, it's just like if you go out there and a child is small and you discipline your child. And your child says, Mommy, why did you beat me? Why did you spank me? You know what you did. You don't tell them. Then they go out there uh, a couple of days later and do the same thing and you punish them again. Mama, what did I do? You know what you did. Well, if you don't tell them what it is that they did wrong, they're going to keep repeating the same stuff over and over again. Amen. Amen. Let him ask God who gives liberty to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Again, you have not? Because you ask not. Two more scriptures, let's go home. James 3, verse 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. Oh, some of us, some of us, it's going to be my way. I'm always right. Deacon Jones had a little joke when he says, I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> Have you ever seen people that's always right? Mm -hmm. I used to be like that. <laughs> and to get my point across, all right, then, and to get my point across, <laughs> to make sure I, I, I was right, I tried to over talk everybody. I talk. Mm -hmm. Get the last word in. 
But just because you folk let you, you know, over talk them and get the last word in, they know that you're not right. It's first be pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield. It's not going to be your way all the time. So true, so true. But some of us, I'm, I'm going to be right, I'm not going to have anything to do with it. And then it says full of mercy. And wisdom, wisdom, God's wisdom from above yields fruit. Full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality, doesn't play favorites. God doesn't play favorites. We as children of God, we're not supposed to play favorites. And without hypocrisy. In the Bible, the word hypocrisy means hypocrites are play actors. Folk that's out there pretending to be one thing and behind closed doors, there's something else. Hmm. But all of us are supposed to be the same way whether inside or out. Whether we're in public or behind closed doors. See, this is why our children act up sometimes. They act up sometimes whenever they see us acting one way out in public and then behind closed doors, we are scoundrels. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mean as a junkyard dog. Mm -hmm. That's why some kids look, but when we're the same way, whether we're in public or behind closed doors, our kids don't mind telling other children, I don't know about your dad. My dad doesn't. My mom doesn't act that way. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. My mom and my dad, they're good to us. Some kids, they love to go to school and hate to come home. Sister Nikita seen it as a school teacher. Kids, some of the kids, they want to go home. Mm -hmm. But whenever we act the same way, and especially when we act this way around our people that, you know, that we're around every day, our husband, our wives, our children, then we'll know how to act when God is over. Okay. How much better to get wisdom than gold? Hmm. And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Hmm. Without wisdom, without knowledge, and without understanding, you can get rich. You can hit the lottery today and be broke next week. All right. All right. They say that the average person that hit those multi-million dollar lotteries, within five years, they're broke. Mm -hmm. Without wisdom, without knowledge, without understanding, you can leave your children a fortune. Mm -hmm. Leave it in your will. You didn't take a vacation, but you wanted them to enjoy. But if you didn't plant some wisdom, some knowledge, and some understanding in them, how long do you think what you left is going to last them? Amen. A good parent will leave an inheritance, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't taught your children to be responsible, it's just like not leaving anything at all. Amen. You have to use wisdom. Knowledge and understanding. Yes. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride. That five letter word, pride. Have you ever been hungry? Someone offer you something to eat and let pride get you? Oh, I'm all right. And your stomach is rotten. Your parents is laughing around you. Pride goes before destruction. If we just put pride aside and allow the love of Jesus to step in. Pride goes before destruction in a halted spirit. I don't have anything else, but I still have my pride, but you're still going to be at home. That's, that's verse. God is making us an offer this morning we can't refuse. 
He who has knowledge spares his words. Mm -hmm. Every time someone says something to you, especially something you don't like, you don't have to respond. Don't do it. How long do you think an argument will last if a person's arguing by themselves? But if you're standing up there giving them word for word, that argument might go along, go on for a long time. And then the argument might escalate into something else. It started out as a war of words, but now it, ended, it ends up in violence. He who has knowledge has his word. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Amen. Man, I did everything I could to provoke uh, him, him or her, but I couldn't get under their skin. But then some folk know all they have to do is just come and just say something to us that we don't like to read. Fly off the head. Yes. A man of understanding or a woman of understanding is of a calm spirit. Even a fool. See, I'm looking at me, that's what I said on scripture. Yeah, right. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. Mm -hmm. That's so fast. See, people are not mind readers. If you just keep your mouth closed, they won't know what you're thinking. So but when you open your mouth, you're telling them just what's on your mind. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. Oh man, he's a wife. I need Reverend Jenkins here now. Reverend Jenkins said that his grandfather, he had a, a cousin named Guinevere. I said, Guinevere was always spouting off at the mouth, always saying something. I said, one day it's his grandfather told him, said, Guinevere, people wouldn't know that you weren't intelligent if you would just keep your mouth closed. Yeah. Mm. But once you open your mouth, you erase all doubt. <laughs> and that's how it is. See, if we would just exercise a little wisdom, knowledge and some understanding, and know how and when to answer, and even when we do answer how to answer, people will count us as wise. Mm -hmm. But whenever we just allow things to just blurt out, haven't even thought it through, sometimes all you have to do is think before you speak. Just think before you speak. Maybe that's why we have, I heard someone say, maybe that's why we have uh, lips and teeth before you get to your tongue. God put two safeguards up there trying to guard that thing. <laughs> Call the tongue. Wisdom. An offer you can't refuse. I'm finished this morning. Let us stand. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all I get in, get understand. <laughs> Maybe there's one today who has not accepted Jesus Christ and made him your Lord and Savior. My brothers and sisters, now is the time to get to know him. Tomorrow or the next second may be too late. While the blood is yet running warm in your veins, when you make that decision today, the word declares that there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner that repents and over 99 just persons that need no repentance. Is there one today? Is there one on today? My brothers and sisters, you may be seated. We thank God for you. And at this time, we're going to ask that uh, brother, brother Briggs.